Now, the next section is the hands-on section. In the hands-on section, we want to monitor some of the uh, some of the interrupts, especially clock interrupts. And after that, we want to trace the contents of the apps in user mode and trace the interrupt handlers. Uh, then we want to change the flow of a program, uh, perform some page table level modification and change the codes and then return to the previous code. So let's see, let's. I again try to connect to HyperDVG. Uh, for the per uh, for this hands on, I made two application named uh, process A and process B. Uh, let's try to close them. Yeah, uh, process A is just a simple thread uh, application, a simple application that creates a thread. Uh, shows its process ID, creates a simple thread, and waits for the thread to, uh, for the infinite thread to just uh, close or just end the execution. Uh, so, and in the target thread, uh, it just tries to run some loops, spend some time in the user mode, and after that, it, uh, it shows some messages along with the special index and this is an infinite loop that uh, tries to continue uh, infinitely here's an execution of this uh, process uh, it just tries to show some uh, it just tries to show some numbers and the second uh, <clears throat> application or process b Uh, this is a, sh a simple shell code for showing uh, uh, a message box. I derived or copied uh, the, sh the shell code from here, a little bit modified. Uh, the How this shell code works is out of the content, uh, co scope of this uh, tutorial, but uh, if you want to learn more, you can uh, read this address. Uh, this is basically the shell code that tries to find uh, some uh, functions uh, from kernel 32 and uh, eventually find uh, the message box function from the target DLL. Uh, and after that, it tries to run, uh, run uh, the message box. Also, there are some routines here that I didn't use it in the shell code, but in case if you want to save or restore register, you can use these um, um, codes that basically push some of the instructions, some of the registers into the stack and eventually pop them from the stack. And this is an infinite loop. Uh, this just tries to infinitely uh, run some instruction. I try to use it. Uh, you will uh, find find out why we use it because we just want to keep the execution in user mode. I added uh, at the uh, uh, bottom of this shell code. So when the uh, when when the message box is shown, then the process the processor just tries to uh, run some infinite loop in the process B. So if I try to run it here, you can see that. The breakpoint here it shows yes pound uh and yeah it just tries to continue the execution 
you will you will you will know why we just continue the execution because we we want this uh, uh program to just stay in the user mode so we can intercept its con uh, context and now let now let's try to uh move to the target vm and test uh these processes So this is the process ID for process uh, what process A and this is also the process ID for process B. So we see the message here. Let's try to copy the message. Uh, I make a, an script here. I will let you know what is this script. I will try to describe it. And this is also the process ID for the second process. And let's pause the target debuggy and return to the uh, script. So basically here we want to intercept the clock interrupts. Let's just try to separate them. Uh, as you can see here, uh, we monitor uh, D1 interrupts, which we, which we uh, basically know that uh, relates to the clock interrupts. Uh, and in case of uh, any clock interrupt in this process or in process A, we'll check whether the RIP matches with this mask or not. If it matches, uh, then it means that the clock interrupt is received at the kernel. Uh, so it just tries to continue the execution without any uh, interruption, without uh, pausing the debugger. But in case if it didn't match to this pattern uh, or to this mask uh, bits, then it's uh, uh, probably a user mode uh, uh, module or the uh, interrupt or the clock interrupt received at the user mode uh, part of the uh, process so the user mode received the clock interrupt that's why we uh, put some in infinite loops uh, here in the shell code or uh, we put some infinite uh, execution here we uh, put it here because we want uh, the target thread to spend a lot of time in the user mode so we can intercept it while it's operating in the user mode the same is also applied to the second process we use an infinite node so i'm going to use it for both of the processes uh, first let's go to the process b and uh, intercept its execution yeah as you can see as we expect here we, uh, we uh, get here uh, where the infinite loop is located we are in the user mode section of uh, process b and it just tries to run some nopes and some infinite nopes and we are in the middle of this process so if i want to use the dot process command here you can see that uh, we are currently in process B. Uh, let's try to see the RIP register, the address of the program counter. Uh, the program counter is located here. And let, let's see the actual PTE for this program counter to see where is the actual page table and what it contains. I try to uh, make a copy out of it, uh, paste it on process B. Now we know that uh, this target RIP address contains this value and its uh, PT is located here. 
that that's it that's it for now i i try to uh clear all of the events uh, and continue the debugging normally uh i try to copy this shell code address this is the shell code address uh, uh this is where the shell code address is located at this process as process b uh, so I try to write it here. Shell code is located uh, here. Okay. Uh, now let's try to go to the process A to see what this process tries to do. And we reach somewhere here. It tries to basically make some computation in the user mode again. As we used uh, this script, we uh, we only uh, receive uh interrupts uh we only pause the debugger when we are when it uh clock interrupt received in the user mode so if i just want to see its registers we have these registers and if i just try to uh read uh read the pt or the page table for this r for the rip address of the of uh, this process i can use the pt command again i try to make a copy out of it and paste it here. Uh, now let's try to ma manipulate the, this process. You know, for example, sometimes we need to inject some codes in the target process or for example, use a uh, create remote thread. Uh, some, some, sometimes it's blocked by, for example, by using some anti debugging methods, it's blocked in the target process. Uh, so there's no, we have to find some other ways of injecting codes in the target process, but here is an uh, easy way of how we can inject uh, or shell code in the target uh, process. So basically we are currently uh, uh, executing this RIP address. We are here. Now what happens? If we completely manipulate the page table at this address and change it uh, to uh, the page, the actual physical address or actual page table of this address uh, from process B, uh, as you can see, as you can imagine, the page, the physical address is changed. So if the physical address is changed, then uh, the content of the memory is changed, and uh, we can. Uh, somehow we mapped the shell code from process B to the address space of process A. So let's try to do that. I try to put uh, some EQ or edit uh, keyword. Uh, we want to modify the process A, which its PT is located at this address. And we try to change its content to the PT of the process B. So basically, this should change the memory layout of this process. So I try to run this command. And another thing, another important thing to mention is that we are uh we want to execute the the shell code the start uh, byte of the shell code is located at this address but uh, uh we change this address so we are we, 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 this address might not be valid in this target process uh, we only have to change the rip because we changed one page or four kilobyte of the data we have to just set these three bits uh, to the same three bits of the here. So we basically have to change the RIP to this address because in this case, uh, we are sure that uh, we want to start from the start address or start byte of the target page that is changed. So that's it for now. Let's try to uh, continue the debuggy. I try to disable events and continue the debuggy. Uh, yeah, there, there is a, there is also another uh, uh, 
uh, panel, uh, there's another message box here that said yes, but uh, this is this uh, this uh, message box comes from process A, not process B, because we change it. Let let's see to make sure whether it's coming from the process A or B. I use a, a program called Inspect from the Windows SDK. You can find it in your target Windows SDK. I try to run it and it shows me the different panels uh, or different uh, dialogues. Uh, we can see that Palm uh, panel is here. I can even highlight it. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, and the process ID for this panel uh, should be somewhere here. It's two uh, thousand five hundred. Let's try to convert it to the hexadecimal format. Nine C four, and this nine C four, as you can see, is the same as uh, process A. So 9C4 is executed at process A. And in this target process, we, we were able to run some codes. We, we inject our code, we inject our shell code. Uh, uh, the reason why I just don't uh, map the process entirely uh, is because uh, there might be some changes in the uh, functions, uh, for example, the kernel CID or other other DLLs that used by process B might not be also mapped to the process A. So I just try to uh, run some shell codes that try to find uh, the API calls by themselves. Uh, this way we inject some codes on this target process. Now let's try to return the process to its normal execution flow. Again, I try to go to process A. Run it and uh, we want to intercept its execution in the user mode. I, I try to, uh, the, the, the thing is that the thread is currently uh, in the kernel. Uh, waiting for the message box to be clicked. So I try, uh, I uh, click OK and again uh, go to this process, run the same command. Yeah, we reach uh, again uh, to this address, which is uh, we are in the process A. And uh, running some infinite uh, nopes that we added to the process B's shell code. So let, let's just try to uh, uh, make the program to return to its normal execution flow. Uh, I try to uh, clear interrupts uh, return and see as you can see here it's paused in 20 index uh, no longer we see new uh, indexes here so i try to run the command the script command again to intercept the execution in the user mode we are here um, basically you can uh, add some of the sh uh, some of the shell codes for saving and returning uh, the registers so we are not forced to change the registers here but the, but i prefer to uh, run them or restore them manually uh, the first thing that we should uh, solve is this address we have to uh, change it to to the previous uh, PT address and the previous PT or the original PT address is here. So I try to restore it to the or original PT address. Uh, and after that, I try to uh, restore the registers. Uh, these registers are useless in, because this is a 32 bit 
application, but I have to restore these registers. So let's try to make some uh, register commands. I want to return to the previous state of the process, the, the previous state of the process. So basically running these commands should change the state to the previous state and also we change the uh, actual uh, PT entry to its original address. So it should be fine. Let me disable all the events and try to run the program. And as you can see, it starts to counting again because we uh, return to the program's normal flow and the program is, is just nothing happened. It tries to continue its normal execution. And uh, in the middle of this execution, we just inject some codes. Yeah, that's how it works.